Welcome back to Professor Pandemic's fifth grade math class, friends. Today we're here to talk about how to estimate decimals to find a quotient. It can be similar to how you estimate when you multiply, but there is a difference slightly, and it has to do with compatible numbers, which we'll get to here in a second. But when you estimate to find a quotient, you can do things very similar to the first step of multiplying. You still want to estimate to the nearest whole number. So if I have 42 and 3 tenths divided by 6 and 4 tenths, notice I start by rounding and I get 6 and 42. If this comes out to a nice simple basic fact, something you can multiply by 6 to get 42, you don't have to do anything. So right here, 42 divided by 6 is 7. That comes out nice and easy. You don't have to worry about coming up with compatible numbers. Sometimes estimating will still work, just like it did for multiplication. However, if we look at this next problem here, we have 42 and 3 tenths divided by 9 and 2 tenths. When we estimate, it comes out to 42 divided by 9. But there's nothing that we can multiply by 9 to get 42. There's no nice basic fact. And again, when we estimate, we want to be able to do something quickly. Because if it takes us longer to estimate than to solve the actual problem, why are we estimating? Just go solve the problem. So I have to find compatible numbers. How do I do that? I look for numbers I can multiply by 9 to get me close to 40 to 42. Now that I do that by skip counting by 9s or using my 9 facts. So I go 9, 18, 27, 36, 42, 45. And so right here, 42 actually comes in between 36 and 45. Those are my compatible numbers for estimating. Now I want to see which number 42 comes closest to. Well, it only takes me three dots, or three numbers, to get to 45, where it takes me more than three dots to get to 36. So the best number to estimate here would be 45. Could you use 36? You could. It's a compatible number. You can estimate there. But again, we're looking for the best estimate right now when we're trying to find our answer. So I would change 42 to 45 for my compatible number and do 45 divided by 9 and then that equals 5. Again, estimating, you're not looking for the exact answer. You're looking for an answer that you can use to check your work to see if your actual answer when you go to divide this is reasonable. So let's take a look at a couple problems so you could practice dividing and estimating and we'll see how you do with this. For our first problem today, we have 72 and 3 tenths divided by 8 and 9 tenths. Estimate your numbers and let's see if you can get the correct quotient. Hopefully, friends, when you estimate it, you got 8 for your quotient. That's because when we estimate 72 and 3 tenths, it stays at 72. 8 and 9 tenths rounds up to 9. And we can, 72 divided by 9, find a basic fact that will work for that, 9 times 8. So 8 is our answer when we divide 72 by 9. So again, like I said, you don't always have to find compatible numbers if your estimate works out to something that you can use. Let's do a couple where this won't be the case. All right, friends, we have 62 and 7 tenths divided by 7 and 6 tenths. Let's estimate our numbers and use compatible numbers to try to find what the estimate to this quotient would be. Hopefully, you had an answer of 8, which would be the best estimate for this question. Like I said, if we round 62 and 7 tenths, it comes to 63. 7 and 6 tenths rounds to 8. 63 divided by 8 is going to come out as a number like 7 point dot, 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 dot. We don't want to do that. So we want to find a compatible number. So when I'm going through my basic facts and going through my 8's facts, the 63 falls in between the 56 and the 64. 7 times 8 equals 56, and 8 times 8 equals 64. When I'm looking at which number it's closest to, 63 is only 1 away from 64, where obviously it's way further away from 56. So our best estimate would be to use the 64, which is why I did 64 divided by 8 equals 8. If you chose 56 divided by 8 and got 7, it's still an estimate. Technically, it is a correct answer. So I wouldn't say it's necessarily wrong. I'm going to say it's not the best estimate we could choose from. 
And when doing your assignments, you always want to look to see if you can find the best estimate. However, seven technically is a good compatible number estimate if you got it. Let's do a couple more examples. Our next problem, friends, is 27 and 6 tenths divided by 4 and 9 tenths. Let's try this one out and see what you get. For this problem, my best estimate would have been 6. So I estimate 27 and 6 tenths to 28. 4 and 9 tenths to 5. I see 28 divided by 5. I can't find something that's going to work for that to come out with a nice even number. So I use compatible numbers. When I skip count by 5s, 5 times 5 is 25. And 6 times 5 is 30. That's the number 28 falls in between them. 28 is closer to 30, so that's the number I'm going to pick. 30 divided by 5 is 6. If you did 25 divided by 5 and got 5, still an estimate, but not the best one we could have chosen. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Let's do another problem. For our last problem today, friends, we have 51 and 98 hundredths divided by 7 and 3 tenths. Solve that problem, and let's see what you get or an answer. Hopefully you got our best estimate of 7 here, friends, because 51 and 98 hound hundreds rounds to 52. 7 and 3 tenths rounds to 7. Again, 52 divided by 7 does not come out evenly, so we have to use compatible numbers, which means we have to skip count to find what facts come before and after 52. 7 times 7 is 49. 8 times 7 is 56. 52 is right in the middle there. 49 is closer to 52, barely, than it is to 56. So I would have chosen 49, and 49 divided by 7 equals 7. If you chose 56 divided by 7 and got 8, again, still finding a compatible number, still estimating, still technically correct, but again, on most assignments, you're going to want to find the one that's closest. So always be careful and make sure you're picking your best estimate. Well, friends, that brings us to the end of this math lesson. If you need more help with estimating quotients, please talk to your teacher and get some more examples. Your teacher might also do more examples with you. As for me, I'm Professor Pandemic. I hope you have a great day, and the more you learn, the more you know. We'll see you at the next math lesson, fifth graders.